Okay, this is Bright Insight, and they're talking about massive stone blocks. How did these people do all these crazy things? Well, let's listen to what he has to say. Now more than ever, people from around the world are becoming aware of the legitimate mysteries and unanswered questions related to our lost ancient past. As there are certain ancient anomalies that are still totally unexplainable or make no sense, even in the year 2022. You see, it's examples such as the unbelievably massive 100 plus ton megalithic blocks that make up the stone walls of Sacsayhuaman, Peru. A perplexing construction of thousands of perfected polygonal shaped stone appearing as if they were created and fit together with laser-like precision. And make no mistake, this is indeed a true mystery as no one can fully explain, much less demonstrate, how the known tooling possessed by the ancients of South America could have cut, carved, moved, lifted, and constructed these walls to completion. But when... Oh, contraire, mes me. I, I do know how this was done, and I can show you how it was done, and uh, I can see that what I'm going to say is going to be conclusive. So, let's see what you have to say about that, buddy. Okay, he was asking how they could cut those slabs and put them in place. Well... Why does no one talk about this? There's these structures that are, they're not really structures, there were, some kind of a machine was here. You see this, you see this, how it's flattened into the wet substrate. And this was wet when it was done, and these were wet when they cut them. And that's why they fit together so well. And this is tendon. It's from a tendinous area, and this white stuff is the mineralization that happens as tendons start to go out to muscles. And they cut slabs of these wet biological body parts and made walls out of them. And some of them were tendons, some of them were muscles, some of them actually had bone in them. All right, this is Fuerte de San Piata, Bolivia. And this red stuff is blood, and the rest is is wet biological tissue and they were cutting slabs off the edge here moved them in the back and made walls they had other vehicles here there then at the same time too this is in the same kind of tendon this is tendon and that is what they call slurpy slow small uh, small leucine rich proteins slurpies and they are the things that make your tendons slide back and forth. And these are tendons, and these are the straps of tendons. And that is a tire track, like a four-wheel drive tire. You see it? Take your time and look at it. It was wet when it did that. No question whatsoever. And that's been solid for probably 3,500 years at least. Here's some more of those cut slabs. Nobody did that just like... They had some kind of a machine. These are the tendons. And the, the tendon was the a best stuff to use and all the little bumps sticking out I'll show you where those came from but the tendon was the really clean stuff and then sometimes they use stuff that wasn't quite as clean as that that is perfect there's some more tendons and they made a slide out of it <laughs> this is this is the exact structure of a tendon let me just show you the biological tendon all right, this is the tendon. This is the great stuff. It's, I mean, it is perfect to use for this particular application. Now, this is an Achilles tendon, and it's very, very tough. And there's an abrupt transition. You see right there? That's where they break. That's where you get an abrupt transition break in your Achilles tendon. Very, very painful. And um, But other than that, it is just tough and strappy and clear there's very little blood in these it's almost all CaCO3 calcium carbonates now they showed this wall up there way up on the top of the mountain these are the bumps that go to the straps these are a different style tendons than the other ones the other ones went way down and they're the Achilles type tendons these are tendons that are flat tendons that are on like your abdomen and so forth all right, remember this. All over the world, there's these tendon balls. They have no clue about them. They normally had straps attached to them. The straps erode. The balls are very, very tough. In some places in your body, they're just laid into other tissues, and the ball is in place, and then the tendon mat glides on it, like on your stomach. This is exactly where that mat would have been and the ball is in place in the mat. There's other balls all over the place because there's a ton of them where they go. Then that strap runs way up to the tendon mat. There was another one right here. 
that one's broken off. There's the core, and you're going to see the core inside of all of these. That strap would have gone down probably to this one right here. And the straps are less tenuous than the balls. And the mats are, they, they turn into mud, or sand in this case. It depends on the conditions that they're in. They're, it's a little hard to explain, but it's a, it's a case of what's called nucleophilic substitution. And whatever is here is available to substitute and make stable biological things that normally would rot away. But in the right conditions, in heavy, dense waters, salts, acids, all kinds of secretions and catalysts and enzymes that are floating in these waters, they stabilize and they, they, they turn stable. In some cases, not every case, but in, in a lot of these cases, they stabilize and they maintain their original form. Just like the goose. My goose here, Caesar. That's, just, that's, a, that's a goose. There's his feathers right there. I didn't carve those in there. Nobody carved them in there because he just grew them when he was flying around. And there's his throat. All right, the inside turns to basalt. The outside turns to what they call feldspar. Feldspar is nothing more than, than uh, collagens and carriages. I so, showed this a billion times. And it bones, everything happened. Like, that's, a, that's a, a complete bone, cartilage, everything. Periosteum, the whole nine yards. That wrapping right there is what they used to call a tunica. It wraps around a bone and it's 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 protective membrane everything has a membrane even this feathers that's nothing more than a membrane our skin is nothing more than a membrane it protects us from everything else and that's why people are getting sick these membranes are getting invaded remember those walls way up high and they had these little bumps sticking off them that's where these bumps come from they break them off and then you can see the actual core inside they did go down like i showed you to that strap with a ball that anchored in here. This is pulled out. That's an injury. That's supposed to be secured here. And that allows the strap to pull back and forth against an anchor. That's all the tendon balls are as anchors. But the best way they did it was to cut off these little tabs right there. They didn't screw around. They just cut them off. Otherwise, they would have probably fell apart. I think that big panel up on the top of the mountain was a test panel to see how to handle these, this particular type of mat. All right, it's pretty obvious to see that there's a little spot right there where that tendon strap ran over and there would have been a ball in place somewhere else. One here, one here, one here. They had them all up and down, up and down, up and down. They, I think this was a test wall. I can't think of any other reason they would have done this. Some guys were just craftsmen, that's all. That's not, somebody did that as a craftsman, not because they had to do it that way. And other guys just slapped them together. These are those bumps. This is um, some kind of um, algae growing on, but it grows out of blood, and it is red and it's black blood. This is, uh, these are the little bumps all over the walls. And that was the best they could, the way they could handle them. There's these. Hold on, let me show you. Um, there's one here with blood all over it that's just falling apart. Here it is right here. You see this? This shows all of the different types of materials they were using. That is literally a bone. That was a bone in there. And there's the bloody bony part. This is this piece right here. And it's also got some tissue attached to it, whether that's muscle or tendon, I'm not certain. But you can see, down here, they used all the scraps. This is kind of scraps. Look at this one. That's the nastiest piece I've seen in any other construction anywhere. Look at that thing. Now, up here, they used the good stuff. You see, these are the ones with the bumps on them. That, those are the best. Those are the best. So, you, as far as I'm concerned, you've seen all of the different styles of tendon and how they cut them with those machines or whatever. I don't see the machines, but I see the tracks of them. And the thing that I don't understand is how that machine got there. It looked like it had to come out of the sky. Let me show you. As far as I can see, they didn't drive it up here. This was all wet when this was done. This was all moist. It had to have been just after the flood. This had to come out of the sky as far as I'm concerned. I don't see any other way. It didn't drive up off it. There's no tracks going here, and there's none up here. How did it get to be there? Figure that one out.